Good morning, Chapel family. As you can see, it's a little light here today. The uh, men of the chapel are getting sharpened at the men's retreat this weekend. So we're a little light today, but we're still, we're still mighty. We're still powerful, right? I'm actually not going to read a passage today. I'm just going to read one single line of scripture, one verse. It's one I actually ended a sermon on, and God reminded me, like, you know what? I don't give these words to you, so you can ignore them. You need to practice what you preach. And I didn't. And the scripture is Isaiah 26, verse 3. And I like the King James Version. I like how it reads. Thou will keep me in perfect peace when my mind is set on you. And I have to confess my mind wasn't set on him this week. I allowed things to distract me. Those things that usually give me solace weren't available to me this week. And it started Sunday night. I was all on fire from the message. I came in Sunday night. I'm ready to worship. I'm up here. I turn the keyboard on, and the keyboard isn't working. It still isn't. When you press a note, it's supposed to make a sound. Sometimes it makes a sound, sometimes it doesn't, and when it does make a sound, it's not the right sound. So I admit that got to me. I was a little disappointed. I tried to take a hiatus from worship. I thought God was leading me away from that. It was the most miserable month of my life. I realized, no, that's who I am. That's where I need to be. But I didn't have it that night, so I prayed. I was reading my Bible, and I got through that. And praise God, he's given me the ability to worship with multiple instruments. So Monday night, I get my mandolin out, and I have it here today. Now, I haven't played it in a while, because I hurt my finger a while ago. In fact, it's still swollen. But I figured, let me see how my finger, can I play it well enough with this finger? And since I haven't played it enough, it's out of tune. So I'm tuning it. And I'm tuning from the, the lower notes, which are big, thick strings. I go all the way up to the, the high strings, which are very thin. And I'm tuning it. And I hear, pick, and the string breaks. Not only does the string break, but it whips back across the back of my hand. And now I have a nice red line across the back of my hand. It's like, okay, I have it. my keyboard is dying. It failed me. And now my mandolin is attacking me. Now, I have other instruments I could have played. But at this point, I'm afraid to touch them because they're either going to break or they're going to attack me. And I let that rob me of my peace. And then the real attack came during the week. And because my mind was not in the right place, I wasn't ready for it. And it knocked me off my feet. It was a very personal thing and it involves other people. I'm not going to share it, but I'm still struggling with that today. It robbed me of my peace. It robbed me of my sleep this week. I'm still wrestling with it a bit today. But when you're in the midst of the battle, sometimes you just got to replace the E string on your mandolin and play on. And that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here to worship him. With whatever I have left in me this week, I'm going to worship him because he is worthy. That regardless of my circumstances, he is great and he is greatly to be praised. And that doesn't change who he is. My circumstances don't change who he is. He's still God. He is still faithful, and he will still be with me. So I want to pray a prayer of peace over everyone here today. Maybe your week wasn't as bad as mine. Maybe you weren't attacked by a demon-filled mandolin. Maybe you're just weary. Maybe you just had a week, and you're just like, wow. You weren't totally undone, but you're just tired. Maybe you had a great week, and you're here to celebrate. Praise God. But we can all use a little peace. So I want to pray that over everyone today. So Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you this is a day that you have made. Though there isn't necessarily joy in our hearts, we will rejoice and be glad. For those, Father, who had a wonderful week and they're full of your joy today, I pray it's contagious here and it just fills this house. I pray they come here to worship. 
And for those who are weary, who've been beat down this week, not broken, but beaten down and a little tired, Father, I pray for refreshment. Pray for your peace to come over them and flood them. And for those who are like me, Father, that are broken, that are crawling here spiritually on hands and knees, laying on your altar, saying, God, help me today. May we come and praise you. May we come to worship you. I know there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your name. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight my battle.
Somebody that came here today is bringing something to the altar. I suspect that the word that's coming today is going to help transform our hearts as we try to make it through. Praise and worship. I've been trying to hold back the tears all morning. Because I too have gone through some things this week. I'll be a little more transparent. Because the enemy is always trying to fight. And I want to say this because I know, I know in my spirit that the word that's going to come this morning is going to be for all of us. I know it. We're not going to leave here the same way that we came in. So I've been having a lot of um, hoarseness in my voice for a couple months. And I've been a voice coach for over 25 years, so I pretty much knew what was going on. And I've struggled with having my voice attacked quite a few times in my career. I went to the doctors yesterday, and they confirmed that I have a callus growing up the vocal cord. So their suggestion was voice rest. Voice rest means that I shouldn't sing at all. <laughs> but I have a God that is greater than a callus. And he hasn't let my voice leave me yet in all of these years. So I want to encourage you that whatever it is today, I'm not afraid. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> It's an annoyance. The enemy likes to send things that annoy our walk to God. So I want to encourage you to push through that annoyance today, that little bump in the road. And as we worship this morning, as we praise God, we're going to accept healing. And what we, what we came here to bring to the altar, we're going to lay it at his feet today. And we're going to leave better than we came in. Amen. Amen. So be encouraged that God knows exactly what you need today. Amen. Good morning, Huntington Chapel. Good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise me unto you, Jesus. Now I'm going to bring my son up here again. Let's see what he can do. He's a drummer in training, so you guys champion him. Now you know how we do every single Sunday. I need you to clap, 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 clap. That's right, buddy. There you go.
my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Hey, you give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.
So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, show breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, show breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, show breath. So I want to stay in the spirit of worship. I think sometimes I feel that the service comes to a screeching halt when we do announcements, but <clears throat> I want to do announcements as a prayer because most of them are ministries anyway. So Father, I thank you for this house. I thank you for all you've done in it since I have been here. Father, this place looks totally different. I thank you for those who have poured into that. Father, the skill sets you brought to this house are just amazing. I thank you for those that volunteer. October 22nd, Father, we have another work day and we pray for the workers to come. To continue to build this house outside and inside. And I thank you for the many, many many new people you have brought to this house. Father, what a blessing. And we have enough people, Lord, we're going to have another membership class. And there's two sessions. I can't wait to, uh, I can actually be at these and I'm excited to be at them to see the, the people who want to commit to make this their home church, Father. And I pray you're, you're, you're speaking to them right now, Father, those who have called to commit to this house. There's two sessions that people should come to both. The first one is going to be October 29th. The second one is November 5th, the following week, both Saturdays, 9 to 12, Father, as we share our vision, as we share our beliefs, as we share our faith in you. May, they, may we pour that on those, Father, who have come here. Thank you for uh, Ted and Lucetta, Lord, and the ministry they started years ago. Yes, they deserve applause. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to hear from Ted in a little bit, but uh, Father, we just thank you for them. We thank you for their heart to take their story and turn it into a ministry. We thank you that our church is hosting Higher Ground, Father. 
on Mondays, every Monday, 7 o'clock, the faithful are here to help those struggling with addiction. Father, if there's someone in our life struggling with addiction and you want us to take them by the hand, I pray we do that. We bring them and we come with them alongside them on Monday night. I thank you for Jane, Lord. I thank you for the dance ministry. I thank you what a blessing it is. As, as someone who stands up here and, and has an instrument you don't really have to move around with, I've said this before, I'm not a dancer, but I love watching it. It, it does something to me when I see them up here dancing and f see the flags flowing. And I just pray your blessing over them. Father, and it doesn't have, um, is it every Tuesday, Jane? So every Tuesday, Father, they're going to be here and they're going to practice their dancing for you, 7 o'clock. All those you've called, Father, I pray you bring them. I thank you for Lindsay, Father. I thank you for the new ministry she's brought for infants and for mothers. 10 o'clock on Thursdays. And then we jump up a few ages to the youth. We thank you for Elizabeth and those that come alongside her and help her with the youth program. Father, we pray. We pray for this group of, of people, Lord, these, these kids, these young adults, just growing and figuring out who they are. And there's so much pouring into them, Father, that is not of you. So I thank you for this ministry. And I pray, Lord, that through this ministry, you become their primary source of information. Thank you for our young children's ministry. I thank you for Erica and what she's brought to that. One of those people that we've had our last membership class, Father, who has just come into this house and saw a need and answered the call, and we thank you for her. On October 30th, there is a parent meeting time right after church. Right after church, Father. As she partners with the parents, I pray the, par the parents partner with her in this. And I thank you for the men of this house. Even those who didn't go on their retreat, Father, we love them. <laughs> for the ones that are away, Father, we pray you're working through them. And their ministry starts again Saturdays, 9 o'clock, Father. And I can't wait to hear what you've done to them in this, this weekend and what they're going to share and that you keep growing that and you build that on this coming Saturday, 9 o'clock, when they gather again. And I thank you for the resources you've given us. I'm pretty sure we have Usher somewhere in the log here, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for my husband. I told to be ready. <laughs> but I thank you, Father, for it. We can never outgive you. You give us so much, and you only ask for 10% back. Let's just take a moment to listen, to be still before God and know who he is, because I, I needed to be a little still this week, and I need to hear from him. So as the plates are going around, let's just take that moment right now. Father, I thank you for this, these offerings, these tithes. I pray they lay in the groundwork for what's going to build in this house. Father, what you want to do here, you've done so much already, but I know there's so much more you want to do. Father, let this be the fuel for the flame that's going to light this house spiritually on fire. And I thank you for these tithes, for these offerings. I bless them in the name of Jesus. Amen. I 
no, 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 no. So you guys can be seated. You guys can be. No, it's been a, a day of uh, changing, changing directions and making sure every base is covered. And this is only with the men gone. As I was remarking to Lucetta, heaven help us if the women leave on a retreat. We will be in desperate trouble. Um, you know, we'll, we, we will be lost. But it is my privilege, if I can find where he's disappeared to, to uh, welcome Ted to uh, the pulpit this morning. Right in front of him. Oh, there, oh, there he is. Okay. Didn't run. Well, I didn't see you in your usual well, spot. I usually go over there. And I should also announce that the time has come for Sunday school, and I will caution our teachers that uh, today might be a little shorter than usual. And um, so to expect the adults a little bit sooner than usual. And now. Father, we can uh, be praying for our brother here. Oh, we lift up our brother Ted to you as he is prepared to preach your word to us this morning. And you have been speaking to him all week long and preparing him for this moment. I pray, Lord, that you would give us ears to attend to what you have to say through him that your word would go forth, that it would reach into our hearts and the lives of those around us. Bless him for his faithfulness and his attentiveness to this responsibility, Lord. May he be at peace. So I know how nervous he is. Thank you. And uh, it is not an easy task being up here. Now you tell me. And uh, unlike previous occasions, I don't see all that many pairs of glasses to distract one while one is um, up preaching. Bless him, Lord. Speak through him. In the praise of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and welcome, everybody. You know, uh, like you said, you heard the men around the retreat, but Pastor Doug, if you're watching, Edson's here. Edson's in the in the house. Thank you, Edson. And some family, right? Yeah. I won't put any pressure on you. That's all I'm going to do. The other thing I want to say is, uh, well, Pastor Doug said to me, he says, me and George were working on the siding out front, and uh, Pastor Doug says, hey, Ted, uh, would you fill in uh, the pulpit? And then he goes, uh, just pray about it, Ted. But then he walks away. So now I gotta, I, I don't have to pray with him. I gotta pray with God. Now you know when that happens, when you gotta talk, pray with God, he usually tells you step up and do it. So thanks, Doug, for that. The other thing I want to <laughs> say is, uh, uh, my daughter and my wife are here, and. A thing I want to say about them, too, is uh, my daughter says, Dad, she's an occupational therapist. She said, Dad, uh, you've been painting, you've been working, make sure you have a chair next to you. So that's why a chair is behind me. And uh, Liz is helping me. Uh, Lucetta, Erica are helping me. Oh, another thing they said to me, Ted, why do you want to make notes when you never read them? For over 30 years, I make notes, but I don't, I guess I don't look at them. Or when I go to look at them, I say something different. So today, I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to try and do some, uh, read some notes. Uh, later on, you're going to hear a, a song called uh, Amazing Grace. And uh, wherever I'm in a church, and... Uh, I hear that song. I don't care if anybody gets up, I get up. Because uh, that song 
uh, if you know anything about it, and I did a little research on it, it was about this fellow John uh, Knutson. He was born in 1979, and he was a slave trader. So back then, that's what they did. But he was in a violent storm. He, got, he was on a ship, and he was in a violent storm. He got caught up, and he pleaded with God. He said, God, uh, please get me through this. And he did. So I, I kind of, I think of him, and I say, how do, how do these things happen? From being a thief, doing wrong things, to a man of God. And he became a, a minister, I believe. Uh, today I want to talk about some storms, and uh, I'm not talking about that storm we just had in Florida, because uh, we, we didn't create that uh, Mother Nature, if you want to call it that, did it. Uh, I'm talking about the storms that you have in your lives. I want you to think about that. As I, if you don't get anything out of what I say today, just think about the storms you have in your life, and how do you deal with them? So now I'm going back to my notes. Oh, Pastor uh, Greg was here last Sunday, and uh, I never met him before until uh, last week, and uh, he was talking about... Uh, God doesn't qualify the calling. God doesn't call the qualify. He qualifies the call. Now, another, and Sunday night, he talked about uh, mustard seed faith. And I never met him before. And I started this two weeks ago. And so I was telling him about it. He had to go visit a friend in New Britain. He hasn't seen in 25, 30 years. So I said, we're in Milford. No, we're in Monroe. And I said, well, I'll take it. So we go. And uh, I was telling him what uh, I was going to be talking about a little bit. And he says, well, that's just a confirmation from God. I go, mm hmm that's what that is. And uh, think about it. Two, uh, never met him before. He talks about two things I'm going to be talking about tonight, today, and I never met him before. I'm going to have to pull down a little bit on me. Uh, when I was maybe 10 or 11, I had, I had my kid brother and me. We were uh, in the backyard, and I dared him to hit a golf ball through the guy's window because we're kids, you know, we're kids. So he said uh, he was going to do it. Well, he missed, he missed the ball. And uh, I got hit in the mouth, and I lost eight teeth. And I ended up with a... Uh, I lost eight teeth. Back then, they used to use uh, uh, metal plates on the back of the partials. And in time, I'm going to my next paper. How good am I doing so far? <laughs> um, the next time uh, I was in a gang fight, it may be I was in my early 30s, and I, I got shot in the mouth with a 38. I lo I uh, be I uh, the bullet turned because of the partial, the metal partial, and it got lodged broke my jaw, and got lodged in my neck. The doctor said, uh, if it wasn't for the metal plate, I would have died. See how cool God is? He says, this knucklehead's not going to listen to me. <laughs> so I got to help him out a little bit. <laughs> and uh, that's just one little thing God's done for me. I started drinking uh, cough medicine. It had coating in it. Uh, smoked marijuana, drank for years. And believe it or not, that got boring for me. Be, uh, 
So a friend of mine said, hey, Ted, you know, for $2, you can, we can uh, split a bag of heroin. And I said, okay. But I, I said, I'm scared of needles. So he said, Teddy, don't worry, I'll help you. I said, okay. Of course, I didn't want to, back then, $2 was a lot of money, at least in my mind. And uh, so I learned how to use a needle quick. And uh, my, my life turned out to be a disaster. I think I was living in a Category 5 storm in my life. Had no clue, wasn't ready to hear it. Uh, if you ever get caught in junk in your life and you don't see it coming, uh, that's what happens. And eventually, I, well, I was getting grandma seizures. And uh, I think that's part of what helped me uh, hit my bottom. I got on the methadone program. Back then it was free. So, and that wasn't enough. I uh, started going to counseling, and my wife's over there, and I think we did about seven years of counseling. Uh, at one time... Uh, She's laughing already because she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> One time, uh, I said to the counselor, he, he, got, he got to a spot where uh, it was only maybe uh, once a month we were meeting with him. And uh, I said to him, you know, uh, you know, we've been doing good, Nate. Uh, I think uh, you and Lucetta should meet, and uh, I don't have to meet. So he says, well, Ted, why don't you come back next week and we'll talk about it. So I kind of thought that was cool. I said, okay. So next week came, and uh, Nate says, uh, you know, Teddy, you're right. We don't need Lucetta no more. Me and you need to talk. <laughs> That's not what I said to him. <laughs> but he was right. You know, Lucetta had... Uh, more going than me, and uh, she was relying on God before I did. I was doing a job, let's see, 1978. I was sober a year. And you might hear me repeat this because, don't forget, I'm reading my notes. 1978, I was sober, like I said, a year, and I was uh, I was a mason contractor, and I was doing a job for this uh, policeman. Now, remember, I told you I'd been arrested 23 times, so I didn't want to do a job for a cop. That did not, that did not work in my brain. I, I just didn't want to do it. And uh, he told me he was a banker. And uh, part of my wall started, I had a wall, and part of this wall started going away, opening up. And uh, he said, uh, hey, Ted, uh, why don't you come to church? And I said, I didn't want to go to church. He said, uh, I, said well, I said to him, you know what? Uh, I don't have any church clothes. I figured that would get me out of it, you know. So he says, well, Sunday night we dressed down. And I had no excuse. Mm. <laughs> So we went to church, and I got up, and I said, my name's Ted, and I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. I'm not here for you. I'm here for God, because I didn't want to get close to him. I was checking him out, but what did they do? They surprised me. They loved me in. One Sunday morning, uh, this was at Long Hill Baptist, I don't know how many years ago it was, over 30 years. Uh, we're at Long Hill Baptist, and the pastor, uh, they had hymn notes, hymn notes, hymn notes and uh, books, and uh, he said, everybody put their heads down, and nobody look up. He was going to do an altar call. So 
what do I do? I'd look up. I want to make sure everybody had their heads down. <laughs> and uh, they did. So then he asked everybody to stand. And uh, he said, now the people that raised their hands, uh, come forward. And I go, oh, no. God, I don't know God yet, so that was easy. But this guy saw me, so I had to go forward. And I did. They brought me in the back room, and they talked about uh, uh, Matthew uh, 13, 31, 32. Behold, told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. A man planted in the, in the field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it fully grows, becomes the largest of all plants, where birds uh, can perch on it. And uh, I, I felt comfortable because I had that much faith. I had that much to see faith. I pray for you. Uh, if you don't have that faith now, just try that much to see faith and see what God does. And... Uh, I can't, I can't make it happen for you, but I can tell you that's what God does. He takes people who don't think they can do anything, and they become uh, servants. And uh, See, I was serving the devil for a while, and I'm serving God. It's a different story. God is so great. In Romans 10.9, says, if you declare with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart God will, that God has been raised from the dead, you will be saved. Now, I'm going to make a clarification here, because uh, in case something's wrong here, read your own Bible, check it out, okay? Because this is the best I got it. Lissette and me uh, were involved in church we were with another couple, and we became youth leaders. In fact, uh, Liz, which is in here today, hi, Liz, is in here today, but she, we got her daughter here, which is cool. We were, she was one of, our, one of our youth, and so we go back a long time. In uh, 1977, uh, I stopped drinking and drugging. And I was having trouble with 12-step programs because, see, I was getting closer to God and I was learning more about God's Word. And it was the Bible's telling me uh, that I'm no longer a drug addict or an alcoholic. I'm a new creation. Second Corinthians... Uh, to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So how could I keep saying, how could I keep saying that uh, I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict when I, I was drug-free for a year? Uh, I think, and I'm not putting down self trip programs because that's how I got sober. But it was a big leap from being, uh, today I say I'm, I'm a child of God. That's who I am. You know, and uh, I, I can no longer say what I used to say because I had to go to the meetings. So I didn't want to get in conflict with the ministry because it helped me get sober. And uh, so we, uh, I told you we were struggling, and uh, we started going to uh, Trinity Baptist in Fairfield. And I uh, talked to Pastor Dave DeBreeze, who was the pastor then, and I said, and we would like to start a ministry helping alcoholics and drug addicts. And actually, 
anybody who has an idol in their heart uh, should come to one of these meetings. We have more than one because uh, we become slaves to whatever we get involved in in our lives. So he said, uh, go ahead, we can start it. He talked to the deacons. and I don't think we had elders back then. We had deacons. and uh, So now we have our first meeting. So there's me and Lucetta looking at each other. She's laughing again. And I said, Lou, what the heck are we going to say if somebody has some theological question? What are we going to say? So we could tell them, let me find out for you, and I'll, and I'll see where it goes. You know, I, I, let's meet again, and I'll, I'll look it up, and I'll find out what it says. Um, but so I, I, know, I know what it means. I understand what it means. God doesn't call a qualified. He qualifies the calling. I felt unqualified. But I had that mustard seed faith. I've been uh, away from drugs and alcohol for 45 years through the grace of God. I take no credit for it. All I had to do was step up. I was uh, playing golf with a friend of mine. And here's another thing. I'm, I'm playing golf with a pastor, right? Uh, I says, I'm an old junkie. He's a pastor. What the heck did I got in common with him? You know, why am I going to play golf with this guy? And I found out he loved Jesus, and I found out he loved lost people. And that's where my heart was. So he said to me, uh, after we got through playing golf, he said, Ted, uh, would you be interested in helping me at Bridgeport Rescue Mission as a case manager? And I said, Terry, I need a room because I, they asked me to share it with another guy. And I said, no, nah, that's not going to work because one's got to get out of the room so we can try and talk to each other. So they got me a room. And then they bought this uh, building on Park Avenue, and it was still empty. So I got the room, got it painted, and I needed a desk. So I went to the old building and got a desk. So one day, I walk in the room, and there's this thing on my desk. And it took me 20 minutes to open it. It had a button in the middle. Uh, it was a computer. <laughs> so I called up Pastor Terry, and I said, Hey, Terry, you're, never, you're not going to believe what's on my desk. He says, What is it? And I says, Well, I open it. It's a computer. What am I supposed to do with it? And he says, You're supposed to make reports. I said, Make reports? In my mind. I didn't say it out loud to him. And uh, he said, Ted, what's the name of your book? In two seconds, this guy's quick. He said, name the, I wrote a, we wrote a book. I can't say I wrote a book because they're all going to get mad at me. They wrote a book for me. I just came up with the idea. It took two years. The name of the book, it's not your IQ, it's your I will. So he goes, what's the name of your book? And I said it. I'm like, I just shared it with you. So I went to work. So now there's, there's guys in the program that are young. And uh, they're in that generation where computers are part of their lives. And so I, I would call them up. They thought they were getting in trouble. I said, come here, show me how to turn this thing over here. Show me how to change this over here. Show me how to paste. Show me how. Then I'm bringing the computer home and uh, trying to figure it out. And I had a pad, and I kept putting, I figured if I write notes, I, I'm going to figure it out. The problem with a computer is if you have five people helping you, they all have a, five ways of doing it. You want to get confused? Ask somebody to help you with your computer, <laughs> and you'll get confused. Um, I, uh, 
want to see where I left off. That's why they asked me, are you reading notes? I go to the, I go to the mission uh, a lot because uh, uh, I, uh, I like to talk to the guys. Uh, I'm not an employee, uh, so uh, maybe I can help them. Sometimes they open up, sometimes they don't. And I keep saying the same thing. If you don't surrender to God, you don't have a chance. During, uh, during COVID, uh, it was an uncertain time for everybody. But we knew we needed to have uh, meetings. And it was scary. Churches weren't meeting. You remember it, right? Nobody knew what they were doing. Yeah, the news was, to me, the news was driving everybody crazy, at least me. And uh, so as churches were struggling, I heard that uh, Huntington Chapel was meeting out in the field here. And uh, me and Lucetta, uh knew we had to be in fellowship. I didn't know I had to be here. This is a setup, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Um, but anyways, uh, we've been here for uh, over two years, and uh, our lives are different. Uh, our thinking is different. You know, uh, people say you got to stretch. Well, my, my wife helps, helps me stretch my belly, and Pastor Doug is helping me stretch my brain. And some other people, and I thank you for it. Let's see, where are we? Can you put up that slide about higher ground? Uh, it's been two years since we. Uh, it's been two years since we uh, had a celebration. Usually, we we're gonna we we're gonna try and have it here, but. There's not enough space uh, for people because it's, hopefully there's like 175, maybe yeah, 175 people or more. Pivot comes, uh, Bridgeport Rescue Mission comes, and now I heard the, the women are going to be coming. So November 19th at 6 p.m., it's going to be at Trinity Baptist and... Uh, there's going to be uh, two powerful speakers. One's in the room, and I won't put her on the spot. And uh, there's going to be uh, worship. Actually, you guys are doing the worship, right? <laughs> All right. The, and uh, there'll be food and I'm, I get excited that, you know, my wife and my daughter says, Dad, Dad, you can just do this thing. I says, Lou, when we do a celebration, I'm only there for eight, ten minutes, five minutes, and then I'm done. Well, done talking. And uh, so I said, geez, how long do I got to talk to you guys? <laughs> Not that I don't want to talk to you. Uh, this is a different spot for me. Uh, can you put that song up? Absolutely. If you could find it. So you're all invited, guys. So make sure you come. It's, it's free unless the basket comes around. <laughs> Right now, uh, 
I'm asking you, if you have that mustard seed faith, I'm asking you to come up here and we'll pray with you. Or if you're struggling with something, we'll pray with you. Because there's power in prayer. And uh, I'm going to hear amazing grace. And that's all. I'm done, guys. I need it. A little more time. I got a little more time. Oh boy. Amazing grace. Listen to this song. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind.
looking for prayer, welcome to come on up. Otherwise, may God go She's before you to lead you. Mustard seed face, come on. Tell her. Yeah. Thank you so much. Listen, all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus is. Turn off the microphone. Everybody can hear you. Well, I don't care if they hear me. Can you hear me, guys? I got to shut off my mic. May God go before you to lead you. May God go behind you to guard you. May God go beneath you to support you. May God go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. Let the blessings of God come upon you today. Do not be afraid. Go in peace. Thank you.